Hey guys, it's me, Padal of the Twine Spurs Fans. It's your King of the So thank you guys for doing this, this cool, awesome video. This video is part of the Daily Thoughts, Daily Thoughts series. I cannot speak today. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> this video is about um, our social media sites or uh, social networking sites and good and important for our society. So let's get right into it. So uh, my personal opinion is this, is that for social media and networking and being online, I think it's a great thing. I've been able to connect to people across the world, get numerous opportunities, be able to collaborate and educate and inspire multiple amounts of people. Um, right now, the Perseverance Network is at 90 different networks with over 100,000 followers. And um, it's it's incredible. It's awesome. I never thought I would be able to create something like this that, that you guys could be a part of and that you guys could actively engage in and that you guys could actively help build as we go along. It's 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 awesome. I mean, because we got people from tons and tons of different places and even different countries and different states. And it's, it's, it's incredible. Um, so when I, you know, I think of it as a positive, I think having social media and social networking sites, I think are important to our society because of like, you know, connection reasons, you know, um, you know, networking, um, you know, opportunities, you know, remote working, things like that. It, it, it creates abundant possibilities, uh, throughout the world because like me, like me and my employers are typically, you know, I work remotely, so I don't have to be in the same place as them or the same state as them. And I'm able to work for them and upload and post and do all these different things for numerous different types of people. So it's, it's interesting. Um, However, I do understand the resulting other side, you know, that there's more possibility for bullying. There's more possibilities for issues with security. There's more issues for, um, you know, for bullying and it's all sorts of these different things. And it's just, you know, I, I understand that, um, you know, that social networking and social media can be a pain in the ass. It can be, it can be something that gets compulsory, you know, that you have to look at it every five seconds, that it gets something that's irritating and that you have to defend yourself every five seconds. Or it could be this beautiful place that you can be creative and be yourself. And, you know, it really depends on the person and their kind of lifestyles. My personal belief is that, you know, I've gotten that kind of thicker skin. So if I got a hater, you know, I try to help out. And if I can't, you know, well... I'm sorry. I'm sorry you feel that way, but that's just, you know, that's just how they feel. That's their choice. But it, uh, going into, um, going into posting on social media, you know, I post what I like. I post what I'm passionate about. I post these videos, uh, because I have something to say. And because I've been given now the great ability, uh, with you guys to speak on these things and to post these videos online and for them to go to multiple different places, I feel it's more important than ever for me to to get my thoughts out and to, to post these types of videos or posts and things like that. So, um, it's it's interesting. Um, but in my in my ultimate opinion, it works out. It it works out that I mean, although we have a lot of issues, you know, like with security, cyberbullying, um, you know, there's just there's tons of things that could that can go wrong but there's so many of the same things that can go right and i think that as long as we try to strive towards the positive um we have a chance but ultimately we're kind of in that uh wavy zone right now where we haven't quite distinguished you know what is social media used for because uh there's so many different uses for social media and social networks that 
um, we haven't deemed 100% a uh, specific thing, and because we haven't deemed it as a specific thing, there's tons and tons of content, random things going on. It's just all sorts of craziness, and that's kind of why things are a little bit, you know, heptic issues, bullying, security, um, you know, hate, all those different things. So, um, yeah, so what what I want to do is I want to hear you guys' thoughts. I want to respond to you guys with videos. Um, I want to give you some response videos to your comments. Uh, if you want to leave your comments, please leave your comments below on any social media network this is posted on. Uh, like, favorite, and share the video. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. There's more content coming out. I just don't want you to miss it. Otherwise, remember the perseverance is your key to the impossible. I want to say thank you guys for viewing this video, and I will see you guys in future Daily Thoughts videos. the Neil Haley show on the total celebrity segment and I'm excited to welcome to the program from Fox TV's Empire Terrell Carter Terrell thanks for calling how are you oh man thank you for having me I'm good man it's, it's early it's early <laughs> it's early early yes and and what the, but you have those early shoots so you're used to that right at times where you have to shoot really I'm early in the morning I'm yeah, it's sometimes we, we're there at five thirty in the morning, man. But you know, it's on a set like Empire, you're just excited. You know, you don't mind getting up at four o'clock and running down there and doing what you need to do because it's such a great situation to be in. Absolutely. So tell us the experience of how you got this opportunity to be on Empire. Must have been a dream come true for sure. Yeah, uh, man, it's it's an actor singer's dream come true to be on a show like this exactly what I do. I uh, actually auditioned for uh, the uh, other television show that Lee Daniels has called Star. And uh, I auditioned for a role that, that uh, he said you just did so well in the audition, but you're, you you just don't look old enough for this character. It was a character that was one of the girls, I think stepfather or rapist. He was a rapist character. He said, you know, and he said you just don't fit that character. So I'll, I'll remember you. But you know, when, when, when people say that, you never and I sent it to uh, it on my, off of my phone and I got the call from the network it wasn't even you know a casting thing after after a while I got the call from the network uh, they called my agent and told me that you know they made the offer for the role and I was on a flight that night <laughs> wow yeah for sure and then getting this role and the opportunity and what a great cast to work with isn't it an empire Exactly, and, and you're probably shocked by the popularity on social media with it, right? And the conversations every week after the show's over. <laughs> so you can see that when when you're a villain, 
it's okay to be the bad guy, but some people really uh, are, are rooting for those characters, aren't they? Oh, they're rooting for those characters like they have those characters going home with them. So it's great that they love it like that, but they, you know, people take it serious. So they they rip you to shreds, but I don't mind. I, I mean, I'm, I'd be ha- I'm happy to be ripped to shreds on a number one television show on Fox. <laughs> so yes, hey, absolutely for sure. And uh, uh, so t- so tell us more a little bit about your character. You said you're kind of a villain, but basically, what the expectations this season for this character, especially. Well, well, he, he he's uh he, he's uh, like I said a pawn for Felicia Rashad and he uh, for Diana Dubois and he's he's sent in to be the love interest for uh, Jamal Lyon, which is uh, the son of, of uh, Cookie Lyon, and, and and he's sent in to to just woo him and take him and, and knock him off of his feet, but yet at the same time to get to his father, but and he, he my my character's had my character's been like. He's been excommunicated out of the family uh, because of my father's character. So because of that situation, he he he's just trying to get back in his into the Dubois family. So he's doing this basically just to get him back into the graces. It's not even he doesn't really have a stake in taking his family down. So therefore, he has a little bit of you know resent, resentment against uh, the plan, so to say, because he's looking at it like you know, wait a minute, I'm, I'm doing this. You know, to someone for no reason, really. I mean, just because some my aunt has a a agreement with you know the mother, you know, and so he's kind of torn a little bit. But you're still watching him go in with a knife, and he's cutting and he's cutting and he's cutting. But yet at the same time, he starts cutting slower and slower and less and less. So you see what happens. And your relationship with Jamal, it's you're really just playing him, and that's what probably makes people upset, right? Anyway. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because he's playing him, and then he's just, but he's 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 really playing him. I mean, Jamal's a singer. He's singing along with him on his albums, and he's doing things to make him really open up and give him all of the information he needs to 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 be, you know, take him back to Diana Dubois, to 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 just be torn apart, to be hurt, to be you know shredded. And when it all boils down, it's like, why are you doing this? You know, so. Yeah, he's 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 bad. All right, so basically, we have to be ready uh, for Wednesday, uh, Wednesday night uh, when it comes back after the World Series. But tell us specifically the next episode. Give us like a little clue what could happen, and without giving anything away. Well, the next episode, uh, as far as uh, with my character, Tay Diggs plays my cousin. He's the whole reason why. We're doing all of this, and when it boils down to it, he uh, he gets a little jealous because uh, his mother, Diana Dubois, is is kind of favoring me. You know, it's like we're doing this because he his relationship with Cookie Lion was messed up, so we're doing it for him. But she kind of starts loving the fact and the way that I'm handling everything, and so it kind of brings a, a little tiff between he and I. And after that, he he, he gets so jealous that he ends up almost blowing my cover, so he, so to speak. So he oh, wow. does some things blatantly, blatantly at that, that does it, and we get into some heated situations in this next episode, so I can't wait to see this myself. I enjoy filming it. Such a great right, guy. Ben, it's such an amazing guy. Fantastic. And best place we can uh, connect with you social media-wise so that people can start hating uh, even more. Where can we go? Yeah, they can start hate. Let them follow me and hate me even more. Go Follow me on Terrell Music, that's Instagram. Everything is T-E-R-R-E-L-L Music. And that's Instagram and Twitter. You can go find me on Facebook at Terrell Carter. And uh, that's pretty much it. You can find all of my music on iTunes and, and Spotify and Pandora. Terrell Carter on iTunes, Spotify, Pandora, and all of the social media and uh, all of the uh, musical downloads you can find me. Hey, so it's a great platform for you to, for your music as well, being on Empire. It Absolutely, like. man. Yes, it is. Uh huh. That's that. Artists love that for sure. Well, best of luck, man. Thanks for coming on the show and take care. All right. Thank you, brother. See you. Okay. All right. See ya. See ya. Bye bye. You're listening to the Neil Haley Show. We'll be back in just a moment. <laughs>
Hey guys, it's me, Pedalovich, my Pro Experience is your key to the impossible. So thank you guys for this cool, awesome video. This video is part of the Daily Thoughts series. And today's Daily Thoughts are an interesting question. It's probably an old question, an old age question that uh, a lot of people have been asking for many, many years. Is, should we be paying uh, college students or college athletes to play the sports that they, that they play? Like football, soccer, basketball, whatever, you know, sport it is. Should we be paying them to play the sports that, they, that they're playing right now? Um, so let me just kind of voice out my opinion. I want to give you guys the option to give your opinions in the comments below. I might do video responses. You know, I can do video responses, kind of elaborate on this, but let's get right into this. So my opinion is this, is that if we start paying our college athletes, particularly football athletes, uh, you know, the ability to, you know, to go and play and then get a salary off of what they're paying, they're playing. A number of different things are going to happen. The first thing is that uh, colleges are going to push their students along in classes because now that it's a money-making sport for both the school and the student, you know, if they don't fully pass a class or things like that, they're going to try to figure out ways and loopholes and things like that to push the student along uh, through their careers or through through their classes so that they continue to play the sport that's most lucrative for their school. Um, you know, and and of course. Um, this leads into my secondary point where the students who are getting paid to, let's say, play football or play other sports are not going to be as jazzed about going to classes and learning about what they want to learn about because they're going to be like, well, sh shoot, I'm playing sports and I'm going to be, you know, getting a salary already and I'm going to be getting paid and, you, you know, and instead of studying, they're going to be working and working and working hard for the sports. The next thing you know, they're, they're, um, classes and careers go down the drain and it's just it's a mess it's a complete mess now this goes into my next point now my next point is is this is that the whole idea of sports the whole idea of you know playing college sports from going from high school to middle school things like that the whole idea is is your talent your teamwork your ability to do great things to have fun to enjoy the sports to be competitive not for it to be about when is my next paycheck? Because we have been stuck in this type of a, um, a thing with professional sports where instead of, you know, oh, it's a great team or, oh, we're having fun or, or it's a, you know, it's a great thing, you know, because although players will say this in, in a lot of interviews, there is actually a lot of players that do feel, you know, disconnected or don't feel quite at home with their teams and things like that because guess what it is? They're not enjoying their sport or they're not enjoying the team and they're looking for the next paycheck. And you, I mean, if you start looking at this in, in college sports and then pro going after pro professional, um, you know, we, we, we lose the ability of what sports are and what the idea of sports is, is to create teamwork, is to create, you know, um, strength and, and competitiveness and, and, uh, passion for sports and, you know, and creativity and things like that. It ceases to be something of creativity and, uh, passion. And it turns into something of when is my next paycheck, particularly for college students. It's difficult, you know, and I understand, you know, it's difficult because you're paying for college. You're trying to do other things. You got a dorm or you got some where you're living you got all these bills but that's life though that's the whole idea is that while well, you're going to college you're learning how to pay for things and you know if you're doing sports you're making a commitment to a sport because you like it because you're passionate about it you enjoy being with your team you you know i mean there's there's so many reasons the reasons should not be that you are uh, is that you, you know, that you need a your paycheck, you know, that you're, you're going to play football, you're going to play soccer, you're going to play whatever it is, just so you get to get a paycheck. It's not right. I mean, um, and a lot of things like this, because like a lot of people, um, have suggested, you know, well, you know, our players, they play very well, you know, and, and they should get paid and things like that. Uh, don't get me wrong. I think that if you play, if you play well, you should get uh, rewarded for that. But what I'm saying is that if we if we make it a financial, privatized, uh, paycheck oriented thing, uh, we cease to have the ability for people to learn the basics and fundamentals of what sports are. On top of being able to 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 handle and support their basic educational needs for their particular programs, because a lot of people, uh, and this is what's going to happen if we were to privatize and we were to pay uh, player pay for play, so to speak, is what they call it. 
um, is that your the educational system where people are like, you know, oh, I'm going for, you know, like, let's say someone wants to go for, um, you know, I don't know what technology, being a doctor, whatever it is, but they're playing another sport. And all of a sudden, they're getting paid to play that other sport. And all of a sudden, boom, because they couldn't focus on their education properly, their sport is all they have now. And although that can be great, in some cases, it's not in the majority, because all of a sudden, you get out of college, you're not signed on by a professional team and then what do you do you don't have a degree you don't have a team what do you do and you didn't learn the fundamentals of keeping and going persevering strength uh, dedication all these things that you would learn during when you're in sports so because you've lost those fundamental traits you're going to be lost at times and that's why I recommend that for educational purposes for college purposes it's better to keep um, players you know both focused on their education as well as the sport uh because it's very very important um however now looking at the other side of things too is that um you know like, like so many people have suggested is that well our coaches get paid very well and our staff gets paid very well why don't our players get paid very well well the thing is is this is that the 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 coaches and the staff are employees of the school and their primary focus is the sport versus the students have the uh, educational part and the sports part and because they have the two uh, and they're already stressed enough with the amount of studying that you need to do for classes the amount of work you need to do for classes on top of the sports practicing and the you know and the games and train things and traveling it's just you know in my opinion when you're in college you're figuring out your priorities so your question so the question I have for people when uh, they bring up you know the pay for play is what is more more so um, your priority is your priority getting a paycheck or is your priority going and doing uh, whatever educational thing you're going towards because let me tell you this if your answer is to get a paycheck you're doing the wrong profession you're going for the wrong thing because although money is important your passion if you don't have a passion you go for something you don't have a passion for it you're going to fail you're going to fail 100% because you're going to hit one day, you, you might even get a job with it and not have passion. But let me tell you, you're going to hit a day sometime and it's going to suck. You know, that day is going to suck. It's going to be really bad. It's something's going to wrong and you're not going to be able to go through it. And you're going to give up. And let me tell you is that if you're passionate about something, even if the day sucks, you're going to try to get through it in some passion, in some fashion. So that is my thoughts. What I want you guys to do is I want you guys to leave your thoughts and comments in the comments below. I want to hear you guys' thoughts. I want to make some reaction videos if you like, um, you know, some response videos to your comments if you like me to elaborate on other things. Uh, otherwise, that is pretty much it. So guys, like, favorite, share the video. Video, subscribe if you're not subscribed there's more icons coming out I don't want you to miss it otherwise remember the perseverance is your key to the impossible and we'll see you guys in future uh, daily thoughts videos segment i'm excited to welcome to the program celebrity burt ward the original robin burt thanks for calling and uh i think what has happened losing a, a colleague and a great friend of yours it's kind of bittersweet what's happening with the new uh show coming out right for sure with, with yes. adam's passing Yes, uh, you know, we have a brand new movie out from Warner Brothers called Batman vs. Two-Face. Uh, this was the last project that Adam West worked on, 
He uh, provided the voice of Batman. I provide the, provide the voice of Robin. And the character Two-Face is voiced by none other than William Shatner. So here you have the two most iconic television shows in history, Batman and Star Trek, with the actors working together. Wow. And uh, that, that's going to be an interesting cast working with to get back and, and film this, right? Uh, just to get you guys all back together and working with uh, the cast. That's, that must be a, must have been a fun experience, wasn't it? Well, yes, and, and now it, it's come out uh, today on Blu-ray and DVD. And uh, last weekend I was in New York City at the New York Comic Con where we had a world premiere of the movie, and people were standing ovation. They just loved it. It was fantastic. And it's amazing to watch the, as many fans as you guys have the, from the original show, right? It, it just, it's, it's, it's humbling, isn't it? We, it, it is, you know. I mean, uh, Batman has, has, you know, it came out in, in 1966. It's been in prime time for three years and in reruns ever since then. Here today in the U.S., it's on every single week on MeTV. And we have a, generations of kids have grown up watching Batman. Exactly. And now they're telling their kids to watch it, right? So it just continues to be a process that everyone will continue to watch that show forever. You know, and that's, 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 that's oh, just yeah. a great... It's a lot of fun. It's healthy. It's family entertainment. And this new movie is really cool. I mean, it has got a combination of the great stuff that we did uh, in, back in the time we originally made Batman combined with some of the stuff in the new movie theaters that have come out of Batman and you, the, the two together combining them, it makes it a really spectacular movie. It's, it's a great film from Warner brothers. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, and you're getting the great feedback and uh, what would you say again, one of your fondest memories working with Adam, can you tell us? Can I tell you something? I met him just before our screen test in 1965, and in five minutes of talking to this man, the two of us were laughing and never stopped laughing. Really? What a wonderful, loving, incredible, hilarious man with the most amazing sense of humor you could ever imagine. And people ask me all the time, what was, what was Adam like? And I said, you know, what you saw on the screen is exactly what he was off the screen. Bigger than life. I mean, just an amazing, fun, wild, crazy guy. And he was like the Batman. I mean, you've got great actors that have portrayed him in movies. But there's only one bright night, and that is Adam West. And how do you like going and connected? Yeah, no, sorry, Bert. Well, I was just going to say, you know, and, and and one of the things that Adam would do, just to give you an idea, is that when we make these appearances and we come out on stage, you know, we sign autographs, answer questions, but then they have these panels where we speak to like several thousand people at a time. And I'm introduced first. I come out and people clap and I say hello. Then Adam comes out. And when he comes out, he stands there for a moment and will say something like, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just going to stand here a few extra moments and allow you to gaze at my incredible physical development. And, you know, people start laughing because he's so funny. (laughs) And then he says, would you like to know how at 88 years of age I stay in such great shape? And they say, yes. He says, every morning I have a bowl of Burt Ward's Gentle Giants dog food. Uh And people start crying. They're laughing so hard, which – leads me into kind of a, an ironic twist because, as you know or probably know, that my wife and I for the last 23 years have rescued more than 15,500 dogs. It's our charity. It's called Gentle Giants. We're the largest giant breed dog rescue in the world. We're a charity, 501c3. We take no salary whatsoever. It's all about the animals. And in the course of doing this, we have found a way to double and triple the lifespan of dogs. We have dogs living as long as 27 years. And when oh. Adam would, would make this joke on, on, on in front of people, it, you know, I got to tell you something. My heart kind of 
gets a little pain in it because here with creating this wonderful dog food that is double the lifespan of dogs, I would give anything if I could have doubled the lifespan of my dear friend. <laughs> yes. Oh, well, he just seemed so uh, giving as he's been telling us and, and your work that you're doing with, for dogs, saving dogs lives is just amazing. We all know how you rescue so many animals. You've come on the show before, rescue so many dogs at your home and what you're doing. But where's the best place we can find info? I know for a fact you said now it's available. Batman versus Two-Face is now available on Blu-ray. But what about information on Gentle Giants dog food and stuff? Where can we go? Yeah, our Gentle Giants dog food now is going into all the Walmarts across the country. It'll be in by February, and also we're in all the stop and shop stores in New England, and you know, and and for people can then they can have a chance for their dog to live as long as our dogs, which are living up to 27 years. And by the way, our dogs are so healthy. The only time they go to a veterinarian is every three years for a $10 rabies update. And you know, with the right kind of food and nutrition and love, everybody's dogs can live as long as our dogs are living, up to 27 years. All right, so the best place we can find info is go where? Well, uh, it, it'll be in every Walmart. It's available online at, at walmart.com, chewy.com, petsmart.com. And, and, and then, like I said, it'll be in all the Walmarts in February of 2018, just a few months away. And we're also, at the end of this month, in all the stop and shop stores. I don't know if you have them in your area, but they, they're, they're like 770 grocery stores on the whole uh, uh, New England coast. So, um, it, you know, and it's just our charity, and we're thrilled to do it. And people could, by the way, if they want to get information on how to properly feed and care for their dog, they can write to us on our Facebook page, Gentle Giants Dog Food and Products, and we get thousands of emails a week. And my wife and I answer every single one of them. We help people for free. We take no money from this. In fact, we tell people that our dog food, you get twice the life for half the price. And it's all awesome. about charity, and I want everybody's dog to live as long as ours. In fact, I just want to mention one thing. My daughter is now 26 years of age. We got her at an American Eskimo, which is about a small breed dog, and when she was a year and a half. She's had that same dog for more than 20 years. You can't do that with regular dog food, but you can do it with Gentle Giants dog food. All right, so everyone needs to go to GentleGiantsRescue.com for more information on Burt Ward. Find the Facebook page, Twitter, all those things. Burt, thanks for calling, and best of luck, man. Thank you, citizens. To the Batmobile. All right, to the Batmobile. Take care, Burt. Thanks. Bye-bye. You're listening to Neil Haley's show. We'll be back in just a moment. My experience is you are key to the impossible, and I said thank you guys for being on this cool, awesome video. Uh, this video is part of the My Eastside 3 Journey campaign series of videos. Uh, this will be up on my landing page, YouTube, Facebook, all those great different places. Um, I'm going to be continuing to make uh, more of these and get more of my story out to the world. Uh, but let's get into this, this particular video. So, um, how do I put this? For... For for years, 
I have been uh, decreasing in vision for like the last seven years now. Uh, my vision has been decreasing. My two uh, primary issues that have been causing this is um, borderline glaucoma and cor corn rod dystrophy. Now, uh, a quick rundown is that uh, glaucoma is oriented towards the eye pressure uh, in your eyes, kind of like the fluid levels. The more eye pressure that you have, the more um, damage it could do to like the optic nerve, to like different parts and muscles of the eye, things like that. Uh, thankfully, my glaucoma has been pretty stable for the, for the most part. Um, However, uh, cone and rod dystrophy is the degeneration of your cones and rods, which are your light and color receptor cells in your eye. Um, and uh, because of the natural degeneration process, um, well, I, well I, should, I shouldn't say natural. I'll, I'll get to that in a moment. But uh, basically the process uh, uh, of degeneration, I've lost, you know, uh, from when this all started to now, I've lost my color perception, my clarity perception, um, major details, things like that. It, I've lost a lot of vision and a lot of capabilities to perceive the world around me as I used to see it. Um, my vision acuity back then, before this, you know, technically all started, was 20 over 80 to 20 over 100 with, corrected with my glasses. <coughs> And now it is uh, 20 over 1600. Um, I, I can't see faces. I can't see people. I can't see a lot of major details. Heck, I can't even see the phone that I'm recording on right now. The only way that, um, you guys are seeing me focused like this is because I actually have a, I, I have a, um, a, uh, a planned thing, you know, like a, on my desk here, uh, that allows me to make sure that my camera is centered on me. So, um, that's just, that's beside the point. But, um, what I want to talk about though, is, um, is that for seven years I've been told that, that this is, you know, um, that this is not solvable. This is not, uh, fixable, anything like that. Um, before, like, let's, let's say, because like in the beginning of my story, the beginning of the seven years, um, it was actually a complete mystery as to what was going on. All we know, all we knew is that there was correlation between that, uh, at times when I went to sleep, my vision would change and I would have a difference in vision acuity. Um, and that would, that would be it. Uh, for the most part at the beginning, it was small changes. It was little things here and there, a little bit of blurry, a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, perception, things like that. It's, it's little stuff. Um, but as it continued to go on, uh, my vision just, it continued to decrease to, you know, uh, to a point of, uh, last year, well, last year going into this year of 2017, uh, to the little bit of 2016, uh, I lost my color perception. Uh, after I lost, uh, my color perception and I'm grayscale colorblind, I started losing much more major portions of my vision up until February of this year, 2017, where, I lost probably the most the most significant amount of vision, uh, being able to do uh, visual tasks and perceive things uh, physically, uh, see faces, see just my general surroundings. Um, it's it, it it's 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 been crazy. It's changed, but at the beginning, you see, because uh, because Conan rod dystrophy is something that. It really needs full-on examination like it really needs microscopic viewing uh, it needs certain tests to evaluate it at the beginning I was perceived by doctors to be quote-unquote mentally unstable or have what is considered called conversion disorder conversion disorder for all of you out there who do not know this is basically uh, a physical manis manifestation or physical change in the body as a result of stress or result of traumatic events things like that um, because they could not figure out what it is. They couldn't put a label on it. They couldn't, you know, it, it was so difficult at the time. 
uh, that they called it conversion disorder. But coupled with this too is that they also made the mistake they thought it was my glaucoma. You see, you see, I have abnormally small eyes, which changes my chemistry, which makes it a little bit more complex for doctors, as well as that I have a thicker cornea. Uh, which means that my eye pressures will be perceived as higher than they might actually be. Uh, so because of this, because of the, also the misdiagnosis of glaucoma, which has also assisted in accelerating things uh, to the point of today, uh, I took um, glaucoma drops um, and um, they ex basically accelerated um, the conan rod dystrophy as well as the glaucoma issues. Uh, because of this, I went from having at least 40 years worth of vision to their expectancy of 10. Um, Right now, I am at year seven, <laughs> and um, like I said, is that from from that point of not knowing, and then they put a label on it, it's conversion disorder, you know, you think, you know, you, you, you begin to wonder, you know, am I, is it something psychological? Is it just, you know, me, what, you know, I mean, and, and I really don't like it that when doctors, when they don't have a solution on something, they just automatically label you as like something psychologically wrong with you, because it came up. Just a little, you know, just some time after I went to the University of Minnesota, we did some tests, we did some evaluations, a little bit more than basic eye doctors, more of a specialty kind of thing. I actually am uh, glad that one of my doctors is actually the same doctor that reviewed me when I was a very, very small baby. So um, I have that uh, fantastic uh, doctor to go off of. And um they found out it's cone and rod dystrophy. Cone and rod dystrophy, because it's the stem cells of the cones and rods, uh, color and light perceptors in your eye, you can't see stuff like that without doing certain tests and certain evaluations because it cannot be saved by the naked eye. It's too microscopic. Um, so thus, we did the evaluations. We figured it out. We figured out the extent of it. Unfortunately, a corneal rod dystrophy is something you can't regulate. It's something that you can't determine as to how quick or how slow it's going to go. It's it's really depends upon itself. Uh, corneal rod dystrophy is also something that you would get... Um, when you're a baby, uh, you can get Conan rod dystrophy is a genetic thing that you get or that you can get at, at birth. Um, and it remains dormant for, you know, pretty much most of your life. Uh, and then it's supposed to, um, you know, if you, if you have it, it's supposed to develop in your older ages. That's why that they told me about, you know, 40 or so years before all this happened, you know, that anything would happen. Um, so that's why it's been accelerated to right now in my life in 2017, where I'm facing most the the most uh, critical and massive effects of it as as of right now. Um, but the thing is, though, is uh, like the like the uh, uh, conversion disorder proving that it's a legitimate issue that it's that there's something actually going on. We had to fight, believe me, a ton of doctors, tons of people. Uh, we had to prove it, prove it, prove it. And it took time, but we finally got it across. Um, as well as, you know, the expectancy of like, you know, how much vision you would have or, or pushing forward or being able to do certain things, things like that. Like, I mean, I was told a lot of times that because of my vision differences, because of my vision decreases, you would never do this again. You'd never do art again. You'd never do, you know, video editing. You'd never do anything like that again. Unfortunately, they just, you know, even straight to my face, straight to my parents' face, you're not going to be able to do this again. You're not going to be able to see again, you know, even currently uh or recently i have been told you know that your vision is unfixable you it's not reversible you cannot see again this is where you are this is your reality you have to accept this this is who you who you are now and the thing is is this i accept my reality to a point i accept my reality because of, you know, this is my disability. You know, this is genetically what's happening. This is something that's happening within my body. And that's just, that's the reality of it. However, I, I accept it to a point because I'm one of those people that likes to continue to break barriers. And when I found out about when I found out about eSight and I found about, I found out, uh, through Facebook, you know, just purely curiosity of looking through a video that was promoted to me, uh, through like, I think it was like Facebook ads or something through eSight. Uh, I saw the video. 
I got interested. I, I could reached out to the company. I asked questions. Uh, you know, it was small at first. Um, you know, I was kind of watching their feeds every once in a while, like their page, you know, I, I figured it was like an, uh, a, a, a product that was like, you know, it's coming. It's not here yet, but it's coming. This is what we're developing. This is what's going to be available. No, to only find out that a little while later, they're a fully established company, and that eSight 3 is the third model in their series of products. So they've been a lot, uh, uh, um, here for a while. Um, but eSight 3, when I found out about it, I'm like, you know, I, I, it'd be awesome to try this out to see if this would actually work for me. And I was hoping for the longest time, I'm like, please. Please, 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 because they have demos. They have demos in different types of states. I'm like, wow, wouldn't it be so awesome if they came here to Minnesota, if they came here and I was able to demo it. And Lord and behold, because I was attached to their, I decided to subscribe to the email list. I created, you know, a little bit of a profile with them to show that I was interested in eSight. And all of a sudden they're like, you know, hey, they send me an email. They're like, hey, we're, go we're coming to Minnesota. We're going to be demoing there. Do you, you know, you can uh, sign up via this site and boom, you, you, you're signed up for a demo and you can come and you can try it for a few minutes. You can come and ask a representative about what eSite is and things like that. And I'm like, I, I, I literally jumped on it. Like within the first little bit uh, of time that I received it. I think I had my spot pegged and signed up with like within like an hour and a half of receiving the email or at least seeing the email, I think. Um, and uh, we went and we demoed it and it, cha it, it changed everything. <laughs> It changed everything. Like I went from a a 20 over 1600 vision acuity currently right now, not being able to see faces, read print, my surroundings, things like that. Wearing eSight 3, I have a vision acuity corrected to 20 over 120. I can read print. I can see faces. I can see detail. I can see my surroundings. I can do my art. I can do video editing like I used to. All these incredible things I, you know, I thought was, you know, was completely lost to me because it's been told to me, you know, by, you know, so many times, well, you know, you, you just you're not going to be able to do them again. And you know what? I figured for the longest time, okay, I'm going to have to figure out alternative ways to doing them. So thus I figured out how to do my art non-visually. And I, and I, I, I somewhat accepted that reality that I would never be able to do art visually until now. Now I know that medical science, it, it, even though it's not like a cure, it's not something that's going to prevent, you know, my vision from changing any more than it is, but it's something that will grow with me and will change with me as um, you know, as things happen, uh, because my optic nerve works, uh, I, you know, and it's just the cones and rods, which make the detail and the color, uh, are having issues. I can still be corrected despite changes. Uh, so like the idea behind eSight is that they're electronic pair of glasses. Basically with my lenses currently, I went and had a low vision refraction at the university of Minnesota and uh, the, uh, lenses that I have are the best that they can do without going and starting going into the distortion realm because of the curves and the light intake and things that the lenses do. I'm at my max, you know, so I can't, I can't get any better classes, uh, or I, at least I haven't been for like two or three years. Uh, so having an electronic enhancement that will allow my glasses to work with a digital enhancement allows my vision to be corrected to the point that physical glasses cannot provide me and allows me to once again do things visually, to see things visually, to do like the things I love, like video editing, uh, art, uh, you know, just basic stuff, seeing, you know, like on a bus, watching, watching, you know, outside the window, you know, um, it's, it's, it's a whole ton of stuff. There's possibility. There the, the finally is a possibility. And I tell you right now, and I tell you all this, is because I love doctors. I mean, I, I love them to death because they're helping people. They help people. That's their job. But at times, i got to say, I have the utmost happiness when I prove a doctor wrong. Because I've been proving doctors wrong ever since I was born. And... I am ready to prove them again. I am ready to prove them wrong that I will see again, that I will get this device, I will get eSight, I will see again, I will do art again, I will be able to do all these different things that I can't, that I haven't been able to do for the longest time. I'm ready for that. 
I'm ready for that. I'm ready to prove them wrong. And it's not, it's not proving them wrong in like a bad way. Like, you know, ha, you know, I knew better than you. No, it's, it's proving them wrong in a good way. Like, you know, this, like, you you are not able to see again you you know you're you're never going to be able to see again and i'm going to come to him and be like you know hey i can see again i i there, there's a way there's a way now science has gotten up to a certain point and it's continuing to evolve where this is possible where 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 technology is advancing to such a point where i can go and say to a doctor i can overcome it right now that technology exists for me to overcome uh, what has been said to be un, uh, overachievable, you know? So um, it's, it's, it's crazy. Um, you know, there's just so many things. There's just, it's, it's undescribable. It's undescribable. Like, I mean, I'm telling you guys, you've been, to you've been told seven years You'd never be able to see again, that your vision would decrease, that you would lose it someday, that, um, you know, that you, you, you just, you, you're, you're becoming more restricted and more prevented from doing certain things. I mean, you've told that over and over and over and then continuing to pers pursue and persevere through that and prove them wrong by doing what you love despite these changes. And all of a sudden you find out that you, that you're waiting and your hard work and your perseverance and your time has finally paid off because they finally came out with a piece of technology that's going to assist you. It's it's something you can't you can't describe. You just you can't. But but the best way that I can describe it is that it's 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 an incredible feeling and it's something that is the reason why I'm doing this I'm doing eSight three campaign. I'm doing these videos. I'm doing these videos because it's important. It's, it's, it's motivating. It's so many things to me, um, that I just, I can't, I, I just, I, I try to describe it, but it just doesn't, it just doesn't come close to what, what it is. Um, so, you know, that's, I, I think, you know, for now, that's a pretty good wrap of this particular video because uh, like what I wanted to tell you guys was a little bit about my background and then a little bit about kind of like the medical side of things uh, for the last little bit. I also wanted to tell you a little bit, you know, kind of like what I've had to persevere through, what I've had to push through. And I'm going to probably put the, put the, uh, those details into more, more specifics in future videos with kind of some stories, but I'm just, you know, I'm I'm incredibly thankful for those who can donate to assist uh, in my dream of getting eSight, uh, and I am incredibly thankful to those who you know even who can even just share this video or who like this video or comment. You know, it's incredibly um, important to me. It's it's and I just I can't say thank you enough. So. Um, I know there's going to be questions. I, w I am more than happy. Like, I mean, YouTube, Facebook, uh, whatever social media platform, even on the landing page of eSight, this is going to be posted on. Uh, if you got questions, if you got comments, there's things you want me to elaborate on, you want to learn more about me, I am more than happy to create videos surrounding your questions. I'm going to be creating more videos around my particular story uh, and my my thoughts, and so you guys can learn more about me and why Eastside Three is is just it's incredible it's it's an incredible uh, it, it's just an incredible piece of technology that's just going to change everything for me. So. Um, I want to say thank you to you guys. Uh, remember the perseverance is your key to the impossible. And I will see you guys in future eSight 3 videos.